So now in this video, I'm going to convert these subnets to digital assets so we can use them in a PDG network. I'll expose a few parameters on each one of the digital assets so we can uh, make some changes. But when I was developing this uh, workflow, I did most of my kind of tweaking inside Houdini, getting the look and kind of feel that I wanted, and then exposed some parameters just in case I needed to make any changes. So let's right click on our first subnet, this extract cliffs, and come to digital assets, create new. So I'm going to call this first one PE high field extract cliffs. I'm going to uncheck the author on the menu entry to be Pegasus. I'm also going to name the labels, also called high field extract cliffs. And I'm going to set the library path to custom and save it into our Pegasus package, Pegasus demo, which we set up with our Houdini package, which saves all our OTLs into this directory. If you've watched our video that explains how to set up a package, then this should be familiar to you. Now I'll click create. The first thing I'm going to do is add a custom icon. And hit apply. So there we go. Now we have our subnet converted to a digital asset and we have our custom Pegasus logo. And the parameter we're going to expose on this digital asset will be this delete small parts. So this threshold here, which we've currently got set to a thousand, let's drag and drop that into our parameters. And I'm going to put this in a folder called delete small cliffs. And this is going to be a simple folder. And let's put our threshold inside that folder. And hit apply. On the threshold, let's set this maximum range to 3000. Now, if I increase this value, we'll reduce the number of cliffs that we have. Or I can decrease the value, to say 500, if I want to retain some of the smaller cliff sections. I found a default value of a thousand kind of kept a reasonably nice size of cliffs. It did lose quite some of the smaller ones, but we kind of kept the most uh, kind of larger, more important areas. Now let's convert our cliff generator to a digital asset. Right click on the subnet, digital asset, create new. This one's going to be called PE cliff generator. And the menu entry to be Pegasus. Again, uncheck author and then save this to our package directory. And hit create. Again, let's add our icon. And we're going to add a few more parameters to this digital asset. So first of all, let's come to this distance along geometry where we're creating this uh, boundary mask and come to the attribute remap. And I want to expose this input max here but we've currently got set to a value of four because I want to be able to um, increase this fall off here if I if I wish to. I'm going to call this edge mask. Let's set the max range to 10. And then I'm going to add this subdivide here. Let's call this subdivisions. And I'm going to leave this 
with a max value of three. I find I really didn't want to go much higher than three. Three was kind of the max before I find my system running out of memory. Now let's just add some folders. I'm going to call this first this first folder geometry. I want this to be a simple folder. I'm just going to put my subdivision into that folder. And then I'm going to add another folder called displacement. Let's add our edge mask into that displacement folder. And on our triplanar displacement, I'm going to add the texture scale. Oops, let's add our edge mask into that folder again. And we want texture scale below it. It goes from edge mask first, then texture scale. Let's set the maximum range of that one to one. And then add our displacement amount. Let's set the one the minimum range to be zero and the maximum range to be 20. And let's also add the axis blend. And then let's hit apply. Let's link these to our digital asset the inputs on our digital asset but I also want these to drive the same values on our secondary displacement so I'm just going to right click on these and do copy parameter and paste reference onto our second displacement I'll link these two together if one changes it will also change the values on the other And the second thing I want to add is the path to our displacement that we're using. So let's add another folder and call this one displacement textures. Make that a simple folder. And now drag these displacement the paths to our displacement textures into our parameters let's call this displacement one and displacement two let's also add a final folder let's call this geometry Let's call this geometry output. And this first one, geometry input. And add our poly reduce. So there we can refine our the, the amount we want to poly reduce our geometry. And let's hit accept. Oops, our displacement folder is a tab. So let's just find that. And there we go. Let's switch this to simple. Hit apply. So now we've got the parameters to just adjust how our cliffs are generated. Down to our final HTA. Right click, digital asset, create new. This one is going to be called PE cliff split. Let's put it in the Pegasus menu entry and then also call this cliff split and set the directory. And create. Let's set the icon. And let's add a folder. Call it grid split. And I want to create a parameter that will drive um, the size of our grid cells. So currently we're here, we're dividing by 100, but I want to substitute this for a parameter. So let's create an integer parameter. 
and set this to a range of 50 and a max of 500. This is grid size. And I've hit apply. We come up here. We can right click on grid size, copy parameter, and then let's highlight 100 and right click, paste relative reference to swap that 100 for that reference to the parameter. Now let's just come up. Currently it's set to zero, so let's set this to 100. I'm going to set that as the default value. So now that's set, right click on the parameter inside our type properties window and copy defaults from node and hit apply. So again, now that's default is 100. And if you come back inside, take a look, just left click on these, you can see now that parameter is working. And let's just have a quick look. Yep, that's working as expected. And if I wanted to, I could say grid size of 50 or 25. If I want to split these up into smaller tile sections, I find a grid size of 100 worked well. They weren't too small that we had kind of thousands of separate pieces, but also not too large enough that they were still manageable to import and handle inside of Unreal. So let's right click and save node type to save all of the changes we've made to disk. And let's do the same for the cliff generator. Right click, save node type. And finally for the cliff split, right click, save node type. So that concludes this video. Next, I'll be setting up these digital assets inside of a PDG network.